Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hello Dave without with Astronomy. We're gonna start in Elite Dangerous, where Frontier last week announced that they are not going to be fixing the planetary tiling issues that we have seen since the launch of Odyssey. For those of you who may not know what this is all about, since Odyssey was launched, Explorers has discovered that the same textures, based the same like maybe ridge lines or the same shapes of mountains or the same most notable the same crater will be available on a lot of different planets and you will see this even though the same planet you can have the same ridge line repeat itself in a very short intervals next to each other and it becomes very obvious as you just have the same pattern repeats in a straight line and then you just sit there tiled across the surface and last week frontier posted on the forum saying that they're not going to be fixing this issue this is an issue that has really divided the community. Some people see it as a, as a minor thing and that you just don't really care much for. And for others, it seems to be an absolute game-breaking bug that they cannot live with. And I guess it depends what kind of playstyle it is. I mean, if you just fly around your day-to-day -day travel, you probably won't notice it much unless you, you look for it. But it really does depend because sometimes you do come across planets where it is just really, really bad. And in other places, you have to look a little bit harder to see it. But it's definitely there, and I'm pretty sure you can find it on almost all planets uh, in the game as it is right now. Frontier did say that they didn't want to spend the resources on this because it's going to be quite a heavy task, and they're going to go back in, and they're going to fix... They would have to go back in and fix it on the back end. Um, but it's apparently it's buried so deep in some of their core code that, um, that it would require a full regeneration of the entire uh, Elite Galaxy. And that means just as when, as we saw with the uh, with the Odyssey launch, all planets is going to be regenerated. It means all mountains are going to be moved around and everything is going to be moved. So they would have to regenerate the whole thing uh, for that. That's one thing, and their planetary uh, <laughs> expert, Dr. K. Ross, left the company some months back, so she's not going to be around to uh, to help them with uh, with that either. They also said this is going to mean they're going to be focusing those resources elsewhere, performance updates, uh, fixing other bugs, um, and new content. Now, I was reading the comment section under the forum thread, and there was one comment that, uh, that I actually find a little hilarious, where somebody posted and said that... It would be nice if Frontier maybe would come out with some teasers or just a little bit of information about that so-called new content that they have been talking about for, for so long. And I, I kind of get his point. I mean, all we've been hearing from Frontier like this year so far since before Christmas actually has been, um, yeah, we won't be doing that. And we can't fix this. Or like, it's just been negative news, put negative news upon negative news all year and it would be really really nice if frontier would come out and just give us a little bit of information about what's to come and, and this is one of the big problems with the way frontier communicates is they never go out and they never talk about things in the distant future they always want to keep secrets they love keeping secrets and tease it because they want to have i feel like they have this feeling that when they then finally comes out with it and say hey in two weeks we're gonna launch this huge thing everybody's gonna go Oh my god, and lose their minds, but what the reality often happens is people go, finally, <laughs> that was about time. I feel like it would be really needed that Frontier went out and gave us just a tiny bit of information about what is it they're working for. I know they want to keep it secret and they probably won't do it. Over in Star Citizen, update 317 is still being tested on the PTU servers. And there have been a number of updates and a bit of talk about some of the uh, some of the things that have been, been added and... One of the things I think that's interesting that they're testing this patch is they are testing what's called server streaming. And this has nothing to do with video streaming. Um, you might remember the beginning of the patch. It was quite unstable. People couldn't spawn in their ships. Like All of a sudden there were like textures missing here and there. It was a royal mess at the beginning of the, of the PTU. And this is because what they're testing is this server streaming, which means that you can transfer a, a active play session between two servers. So the way it works in Star Citizen today is when you log in to, uh, to the game, you are assigned to a server. That server manages the whole system. And you're going to stay on that server for the entirety of your play session. If you want to swap to another server, it means you have to go out to the main menu and log in again you're going to be assigned hopefully to uh, to a different server and this is also why when we see server crashes we see these 30ks 
then it does happen to serve a system wide. It's it's everybody who just dies at the same time. What they're testing now is again this server streaming where they can then take an active PlayStation and move them between servers without having people going out to the main menu. And this is going to be fundamental for the implementation of, for instance, Pyro, which they say they will be adding later this year, which is the second or the first additional system we're going to get in, uh, in Star Citizen. And of course, when you do the transfer between Stanton and Pyro, when you swap between systems, those are going to be on separate servers. And that means that you're going to have to have this server streaming in place so you can swap between servers as you move between systems. And this is what they're testing at least the first steps of it is being tested in the 317. And this is why we've seen these issues with ships not spawning in and textures missing because that server streaming is not like fully developed yet, but it's being tested right now. This of course also is going to be fundamental for the implementation of server meshing, which is something I think a lot of people has really been uh, been waiting for. The idea with server meshing is that not only will you have one server dedicated to an entire system, but you can have dynamically uh, allocated servers to different parts of the system. So if you suddenly have a lot of of players on one specific station somewhere, will that then what that one station will get it? It's it, a dedicated server. And then you, maybe the rest of the system that's not so populated can run on another server. And you can have these nested areas inside each other run by different servers. And of course, as you're moving around the system your PlayStation is going to have to be streamed between these servers so that you get into the to the right servers as you are as you're playing around. So that is the that is the idea and that's what they've been working on um and it's going to be interesting when they put this live because this is again very like back end fundamental stuff that they have been they've been dealing with here and if they don't get it fully stable before 317 launches which is not a given then we could end up with 317 being one of the more unstable patches, and maybe we're going to see a reintroduction on a of of more 30ks. I mean, the last like two, three, maybe four patches, something like that, has been very stable in terms of at least two patches, three patches, maybe I don't know. They've been very stable, um, and we haven't seen a whole lot of 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 30ks that've been very rare. Um, but again, now that they are beginning to tinker with the, with some of the backend server stuff, then I probably would expect that we're going to see an increase in the 30ks again which is a bit of a shame because they are quite annoying. But hopefully it's not going to be something that's going to be lasting too long. But we'll see. Who knows? Maybe they're also just testing on the on the 317 PTU. Maybe these are changes that are not going to be pulled over to the live server. Maybe they're just running a test now, going back, looking at what what learning points they got and then fixing it up. And then maybe for 318, they're going to be running another test again and again. I don't know. We'll see. Now let's go and talk about live streams this week. I hope that I'm going to be able to get some more live streams out this week. I'm going to have the live stream tomorrow. We're going to talk about that in a bit. But I want to see if I can get more live streams out this week and maybe also over the weekend. It's going to be as time permits. I have quite a booked <laughs> week. So it's it's going to really be, yeah, as I said, as, as time permits. What I will be streaming this week is I'm going to be streaming a lot of Star Citizen. And the reason I'm going to do that is because that Star Citizen and Toby is currently running a spring sale event. And Toby is not only giving away some eye trackers, like Toby eye tracker, if you don't know who it is, but with these eye trackers that you can put under your screen so you can use it to like track your head, track your eyes, and you can use that for various things in the game. So I have videos on um, how to use them on, on my channel if you're interested. Toby is running this promotion where you can, they have a, like this lottery where not only can you win an eye tracker, you can also win game packs for Star Citizen and all kinds of other cool stuff. And the way you do it is you collect points by watching Star Citizen streamers or Star or Toby ambassadors who stream Star Citizen. We are quite a few. And that means that if you watch my Star Citizen streams this week, you're going to be accumulating points towards um, towards this uh, this giveaway that they're going to launch. They're going to draw the winners, I think, next week, beginning of next week. So do come by the live streams. Um, it is going to be Twitch side. I'm going to be live streaming both YouTube and Twitch as always. But if you want to accumulate points, you have to watch it over on the Twitch side um, rather than the YouTube side. But I'm going to explain that in more detail. There's going to be some links you can follow where there's going to be more stuff to, uh, to read about how to sign up and all that stuff. I'm going to go through all that in the live streams <clears throat> and I'm going to make sure there are again, links so you can go and, and, and read up on it and all that stuff. So if you are interested in winning yourself either some uh, some game packs for Star Citizen or maybe a Toby Eye Tracker, 
then do come by watch the live streams doing uh, doing this week as there is some uh, some cool stuff to uh, to get your hands on there but for the live stream tomorrow i'm going to be jumping in on the ptu if it's stable we'll see uh, <laughs> i hope it is but what I want to do is I want to go and play around with the mining devices. I really haven't done much work with them. I've been looking at them, just looking up at the stats, been thinking about how how they're going to play into our everyday gaming sessions, everyday mining sessions. And I want to go and test them out. Um, I have purposely stayed away from actually going out and testing them because I want, again, I like to keep the live streams more organic and more, like take you guys with me as we go and explore something together so again i haven't gone out and tested it. i've been looking at the stats and i've been thinking about how i think they're going to work but we're going to go out together tomorrow i'm going to fly out we're going to find some rocks we're going to mine them we're going to try to use the mining devices we're going to use them both on planets we're going to try to use them in space we're going to see how it all works out and how i think the meta is going to be i'm not going to do a dedicated video as now as it's still being tested and stats can change and who knows um, before the things actually goes live but it could be fun to go out and play around with them just to see what they can do and see if they will actually make a difference if they're worth it or not how do you want re to recover them all that stuff so if you're interested in um, in how that's gonna affect mining then do come by the live stream tomorrow um, but if that's not your cup of tea then there will be other star citizen content not focused around mining hopefully later this week thanks so much for watching and until next time i'll see you guys in space